Sorry, folks at home. I'm Emeril Lagasse, and I hope you're in the mood for something really big. I mean big, big. My inspiration for tonight's show comes from the world's largest country. I'm talking about Russia. Just to whet your appetite, how about starting with a vodka tasting? Huh? What about if we start with a vodka tasting? And then perhaps maybe some Bellinis. We got a couple of special, special guests also here. Uh, we're going to just talk and learn all about vodka and a little bit about Russia. Then maybe you're craving a little potato and cheese pierogi. <laughs> oh, yeah, babe. Little pierogi. Love that. Hang on to your hats, because it's Russian cuisine. You know where, right? Right here on Emerald Live. <laughs> Gary, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Marty, welcome, special guests. We're gonna come back, learn all about these two guys right here. Give it up for Doc Gibbs and Cliff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just, you know, kind of in that Russian mood, you know. Just... I'm, I'm with you, man. You ever been over there? No, but I'm, I'll go for that vodka. We're business. going, yeah, we're... <laughs> Look, we even, Doc, we even got special guests here. And special glasses. Yeah, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk all about that stuff. Before we do that, we're coming over here. How you guys doing? Okay. How are you, honey? Good. Russian food. Some of the uh, staples in Russian food. A lot of cabbage, a lot of beets, a lot of different grains like millet, buckwheat, horseradish. This is fresh horseradish right here. You ever seen fresh horseradish before? Have you? That's fresh horseradish. Easy. <laughs> you try to do an educational show, right? <laughs> do you know that they uh, also eat a lot of pickled and smoked meats, which is I love. Lots of salmon, smoked fish, dark bread like that. Herring. I love herring. There's some more smoked fish. Different types of desserts with a lot of currants. And what a lot of people don't really realize, this is one right here. This is a classic. Nobody can really relate that this is Russian, but this is shallot. And that's exactly where, yeah, they eat a lot of shallots over there. Now, what we're going to do now that we got the uh, set of all the nice Russian food products, we're going to kick it up. We're going to do some, some Russian food. But first, when we come back, our friends and I are going to show you a little bit about Russian vodka. Stick around. We'll be right back. Got you.
Mark Gibbs and Cliff, everybody. Welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here. And um, I got to tell you, I've been um, delighted to have our guests on here, uh, Gary and Marty Reagan, uh, who have been around in the scene for a long time. And those of you at home that don't know how serious that we are, um, we wanted somebody really serious who uh, could talk about spirits, which these folks are and write about. Uh, they have a couple of books, one called The Bourbon Companion, uh, and also The Martini Companion, one of my favorite ones right here. I actually Thanks. had given this out for a Christmas present. Did but you I really? Won't. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I mean that sincerely. You, and we actually and, start to get in royalties on it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and uh, also one of my favorites, which they write for, is The Wine Enthusiast, which is a uh, wine magazine. Uh, and they are constantly uh, just writing about the subjects uh, of spirits. And so we said, well, let's kick it up a few notches. Let's see if we can get them on the show. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to be correct, and that's why they're here. So uh, how about making them feel at home, everybody, all right? Thanks for coming. Thank Gary, for Marty, me. thanks so Thank much you. for coming. Now, it's always interesting when you have somebody and an expert in the field as these folks, and there were a few things that uh, I learned. First of all, I, I drink vodka occasionally. <laughs> and um, I always have it cold or, you know, on ice. And we were talking earlier and we said basically, you know, when you're really a tasting, doing a tasting of vodka, you shouldn't really drink it too cold. It should be drank at room temperature. At room temperature for the flavors. For the flavors. Yeah, yeah. But when it's chilled, you will notice a difference in the texture and the character between specific bottlings. Great, I love that. So basically what we did is we got them cold. Gary and Marty said, well, if we serve them room temperature, most people aren't gonna, they're not really gonna drink the vodka if it's not good and cold. So we got them pretty well iced down, but they're not frozen. And we went to Russia and we got the Russian vodkas, except we've got one curveball, which we'll talk about in a, in a second here. Uh, I guess this one here, um, Probably uh, most of you know the label, seen it a lot. Uh, certainly a pretty standby uh, Russian vodka. Yeah, the, this was, Stolich and I was basically the first Russian vodka to become popular in the States. Right. And then um, this, which I was surprised, because um, most people, when you say Smirnoff, they go, oh, they, you know, they kind of get that, you know, their eyebrow goes up, you uh -huh. know what I mean? Uh -huh. And uh, there's something about this whole black label of this. Yeah, I mean, most of Smirnoff vodka is made in the U.S., but this black label is made in Russia. In Russia. And it's made in pot stills, so it's going back to the original because the recipe actually came from Russia in the first place. All right, so let's, you know, before we go on, Marty, I, gotta, I mean, what, what is, what's this vodka? I mean, basically what it is. I mean, we hear that's in pot stoves. There's a system that it goes through without, I mean... Making everybody just completely crazy. What's a, what's a simple term that you would? The simple term is that it's uh, distilled from grains or potatoes. Or potatoes. To a, to yeah. a high proof. Yeah. And the end, well, what they're looking for is for something to be absolutely flavorless. Right. That's its formal that's, definition. That's what they're trying, right. It can't have flavor. It can't have flavor. No. Nope. Just a lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. <laughs> that, that, that's why when you distill out at a very high proof, you get in rid of all the impurities, and the impurities are what create the flavor in products such as whiskey. Right. So you're getting rid of the flavor. This one here, you are familiar with Cristal Zidres. Yeah. Cristal Zidres. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice Russian uh, vodka. And uh, this one here. Yeah. Kremlyovskaya, another great one. I think we gave that one a 94 rating. Really? Uh, in, in the wine Excellent. enthusiast. Yeah. This yeah. is the highest one that we've got rated? Yeah, uh, well, you have one more that got the same rating. Okay. Uh, and you're about to come to that. And it, the Cristal, it's a Russian vodka and it's a good product. And it's not my favorite, to be right. honest. It's not, it's, yeah. Now, you snuck one in. I, I maybe shouldn't, I should maybe tell the folks this right now, but actually, you snuck one of these in here right now, and while we're on it, we might as well talk about it. Well, the Russians aren't the only people who can make vodka. <laughs> I mean, vodka comes from Poland, it comes from, they make vodka in England. Sweet. Um, and this particular one, Vincent Vodka, is made in Holland. 
and this is the other one that got a 94 rating. Mm, um, and, and really, when, when you're tasting vodkas, you're looking for character. You're not not specifically looking for flavor. All right, well, let's you're just get some character boldness. right now. That's what damn, I said. Damn good idea. I take it that I can just pour it like such? Yep, right. yep. And do I, is that not enough? Yep. No, too, no, too much? no, because we're going to go See, through all of them, aren't we? There's yeah. sipping. <laughs> exactly. There's right. sipping Got vodka it. and then there's drinking vodka. All right, there's sipping vodka and drinking vodka. I mean, vodka. we are tasting it, so we can't do that whole glass. But in Russia... Oh, Marty, speak for yourself. <laughs> 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 On Emerald Live, you never know what's going to happen, you know? So, should, should they all be poured, or can we do this one no, at no, a time? No, let's do it one at a time. Okay. And I think Marty should tell us about how you hold your head when you're... When you're well, uh, now wait, we're tasting now. I when know, you're but... actually drinking vodka. When we're there, a we're meal. in... Right. Yes. We're in Russia. You drink this glass full, almost to the rim. Three in ounces. Shot? In one shot. And one of the cardinal rules is there is no sipping of vodka. Vodka is tossed back. You never drink alone. Huh. <laughs> Anybody for a little trip? <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah, you did. Hold your head back. Hold the head back. Yeah. Head back. Throw it down. Yeah. Now, they do something. Like you just went like that, you hold your head back, and then you just went like that. Don't they do that thing too? Yeah. A little smash and thing like that. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're gonna kick it up a notch. Stick around. Before we go visit with my friends again, I wanted to uh, tell you about Zakuski's. Isn't that right, Joe? Yes. I, I, that was good, right? Good. Say it again. Zakuski. Little snacks, little, I call them num nums. <laughs> and um, do a lot with eggs. We're going to get those in a little bit, but first, we've got to go back. We're having such a good time with Gary and Marty here. We've got to go back and continue our vodka tasting. Hey, and who knows, maybe before it's over, one dish will get made. <laughs> Zakutskis. All right. All right, guys. So uh, we did uh, we did the first one. The Kremlyovskaya, yeah. And uh, should we start here? Um, or you want to start here? No, let, let's start with the Stolichnaya, I think. And, okay. and then maybe go to the Dutch vodka, the Vincent vodka. It's just it. so we can see what the differences are. But instead of, <laughs> instead of tossing them back this time, let's, let's, really, let's really taste let's them. Really taste them That's and... really good. <laughs> it's been a beautiful Mardi Gras so far. <laughs> now, the, there's really a pepperiness. In this in, here. In the Stolichnaya. Do, do you agree? Can yes, you... I do. Yeah. Get it yeah. on yeah. the it's... nose? Yes. Yeah. And, and, the, and important... the first thing I get on the palate is I get pepper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that. But if we had salt, this could be a good combo. <laughs> well, it, no, no, you know about well, this, the Russian Well, that's the ones. whole thing about Zakuski, is when you do your, when you shoot back three ounces of vodka, it must be immediately followed with a bite, a, zuki, ah. a, a Zakuski. A normally okay. of something very salty. Salty, briny. A lot of caviar. Yeah, Caviar. which I have that's coming a, up soon. That's a good idea. I but thought after we idea. do this uh, little vodka <laughs> tasting, maybe I'll do a little caviar tasting. Okay. All right? Okay. Does that sound okay. good? All right, this next yeah. one, where are we uh, heading? Let's go to the Vincent. This okay. is the Dutch vodka. This is the one that you were... Yeah, and this is one of our 
favorites. Oh, it really scored good. the same as the um, Kremlyovskaya. This is we really gave good. it a th Isn't that great? Delicious. Now, there's a bread dough quality to this. Mm -hmm. So you, I, I don't know whether you get that or not. And it's very hard to discern flavors in vodkas. Mm -hmm. But bread dough is what springs to mind. And there's also like a sweet oiliness to it. Yeah. But it's so well balanced. When, when you're judging spirits, you're often looking for the best balance. So if it's got bread dough, that earthy, yeasty flavor, does it also have something to counteract that? Does it have a sweetness as well mm -hmm. to, you know, just balance it out? And balance the is Vincent, good, that's I think, really word. has that. Yeah, that's really point, tasty. Mm -hmm. Vodka was called bread beer. Is that right? Um, if you go back and translate. Right. And I think it's th this tastes that authentic way when it was made from, you know, they make from the grains that you use for bread. Where are we going next, here? Yeah, yeah, let's go to the Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can just pour them all together and knock just, them back. Just yeah. said, uh, my kind of guy right there. <laughs> Blend them all, knock them back, forget about it. Let's go eat a snack. <laughs> Wow, that's, that's very different. It's very different. Especially and after you, this one. Mm, yeah, now, do you detect any citrus in this? A little bit, I do. Yeah, be, because it is actually legal, and I don't know for sure that this is true of this bottling, mm -hmm. but it's legal for vodka producers to add a tiny, tiny fraction of a percentage of citrus juice and or sugar. And not, not the peel. Um, it, it's, I it was citric it, acid. It's, it's citric acid, it, oh. it's, it, and it's so. known in the, in the business as a filler. Huh. And sometimes you detect, I think I detect it here, I might be wrong, maybe they don't, um, but it is Hey, illegal. this is our show, to heck with them, you know what I mean? Yeah, I smell yeah. citrus in here. Yeah, damn lime juice exactly, in here, Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I do, I, and I get it right here, too. Yeah, yeah. And this one here? That's the uh, Crystal Zidre. It took me about three days to be able to pronounce Especially that. Especially after you whack a few yeah, hours back. Right, right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. A grain vodka, very high quality, scored only one point less than the Vincent vodka and the uh, Kremlyovskaya. Um, well, you... Grainy, bold, big, big body yes, on indeed. this. Mm -hmm. But isn't it fascinating that something is supp that's supposed to be flavorless has, has such a lot flavor? Of flavor. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're all very different. It right. isn't like. They're all straightforward. This one no, has, like different. we said, this had a little pepper, this had a little citrus. This was just well balanced, like you mm -hmm. said, that, that whole bread, you know, bread dough. Yeah. This one and, here. And then the Cristal, which I misspoke on the last segment. I was thinking of a, an entirely Different other one. vodka that I really don't like. Cristal is actually a real good product. This one here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and this is a new bottling of Cristal, been around for a, a couple of years. Uh -huh. uh, it's not very complex, but it's very well balanced and it's very smooth. Um, very clean. <laughs> are, uh, the, there's a good graininess about this. Yeah, this is good. Vodka. Yeah, yeah. It's feeling very comfortable in here right okay. now. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go make us a snack. Check this out. Zakutski. A little Zukutski with some eggs. What you want to do, folks, you want to take your eggs. You want to pour them inside of a sauce pot. A couple of pinches of salt. You want to bring them up to a boil first. You're going to let them boil for about ten, two minutes. Turn your heat off. About 11 minutes after that, you've got perfect eggs. Now, we can start. In this one here that I got, I'm going to add a little salty ham. A little ham. A little sour cream, a little bit of cheese, and some mustard. So that's one that we're going to do. Real simple. We're going to mash this together to make our filling. Season it with salt and pepper, and we'll be able to uh, stuff some of these right in. Now, this one here, I've got whole butter. So I'm actually adding whole butter, mustard, a little more cheese, a little salt, and then I'm going to use the butter as really the binder with this one right here. A lot of times what they do, as you know, 
they'll garnish these a lot with caviar. I said earlier about salty fish, a lot of smoked fish, salty fish, anchovy, a lot of flavor, chopped up with a little bit of its oil and some whole butter. And now we've got three different fillings to start these. So while I'm filling these up right now, getting our little snacks, visiting with my friends, this would be a good time for you. When we come back, we're going to kick it up a notch. Not only am I going to bring out some caviars, but an unbelievable family potato and cheese pierogi. Stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> everybody. You just joined us tonight. We're celebrating the cuisine of Russia. Some of my real good friends here just doing a little vodka tasting with Gary and Marty. And uh, now we got a little snack. So as they were saying, these are the ones that had the ham. Mm, thank you. These are the ones that uh, had the cheese. And uh, these are the ones that had a little bit of the anchovy. Yeah, make some friends, you know, just <laughs> have a couple, make some there friends, try some more vodka. <laughs> now, before we get into this, classic, mm. classic accompaniment in Russian cuisine that they use with ca caviars, big, big consumers of caviars, which we're going to talk about, is called blinis. And, uh, Every culture sort of has their little ones. This is how simple. To do that, they take some yeast and some milk and butter, bring that up just in so that the yeast begins to dilute and dissolve in this, just like we would make bread. And then, you don't want to be sure to ever, when doing these, or like with bread, you don't want to get the temperature over about 105 degrees because then that, will, that temperature will kill the yeast. A lot of people wonder, when they read directions for making bread, it says, you know, use lukewarm water. Well, everybody has a little different thing in their noggin about what lukewarm is. Um, and then they actually kill the yeast and the bread never rises. When this is uh, cooled down, we're going to take that milk, butter, and yeast mixture. And you always want to be sure that you get it stirred around like I just did so you get all the yeast. You don't want any of that ye yeast being <coughs> hidden in there. Then, they take a couple of egg yolks and add some egg yolks in there. Kind of stir that around. And then they take the egg whites and whip them stiff like that. Now, buckwheat used tremendously in Russian cuisine with flour. We're going to sift the two of those. I also got a little salt. And then either on baker's paper like I have right here, You sift them up. Now these days too also they got those ones you know with the handle look like a canister and their little flower sifting music by Doc Gibbs. Now once you get all of it sifted like this so it's really good and fine so you can see the buckwheat now coming through. That's good, Doc. That's like a 
You know, yeah, okay. See, Doc, that's exactly why they sift that, you see? See all those little, wow. all those specks and stuff in there? Now, here's what we're going to do, folks. We're going to take our sifted flour now, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just add that inside of the liquid mixture. And then we're going to start forming our blini batter, if you will. We'll just kind of fold it in like that, let the liquid dissolve. Can you smell that? It smells good, huh? Where do you taste it? <laughs> How was the egg? Great. Now, how do you know it's the right consistency? Well, I'm going to show you. You don't want it so thick that basically what's going to happen, the reason why I'm using a pallet or a paddle instead of a whisk is because you don't want to get a lot of air bubbles. You see how just those air bubbles right there alone? Because then you're going to have all of these little particles of air. Now, once we get it all incorporated, we'll try the batter. You see how the consistency of that is? All right, let's see what we got. I got this griddle, this fancy griddle thing here. A lot of butter. We're going to butter this griddle. You can do this in a non-stick pan at home. I got a little ladle. We're going to try. We're going to try and see. These little blinis. You can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. The little trick, too, that I do is I kind of use this little spatula like this. And this is the great accompaniment for caviar, which we have right here. We've got a few. Uh, basically, in Russia, they believe that caviar should be out of the sturgeon, and only the sturgeon. Sturgeon's one of the true producing caviar roe fishes in the world. There are very few. There are only five in the world, actually. Sturgeon being the greatest. And when the caviar is at its best, because, hey, you know, this ain't rocket science here. It's fish, eggs, and salt, you know? <laughs> Basically, you can tell by the grains. Example being, Buck, I hope that you can get this. You see on this lid right here, it says beluga. And it's got three zeros, triple zero. That's the highest. Beluga's the best grade, if you will. It's also the most expensive. But that means triple zero, and with beluga being in sturgeon, is you can see how identical, how perfectly round each egg is. That's being the best. Then there's also savruga, and then there's also Orsetra. You can see the difference. Here's Orsetra. Look at the difference of the eggs between the Orsetra and the Beluga. Or the Savruga eggs versus the Beluga. And these little blinis right here, they serve these mostly with caviar. When we come back, I'm not only going to show you how to finish this, but then I'm going to whip up another Russian favorite. Stick around. We'll be right back. Doc Gibbs.
All right. So now we uh, went through a little journey, a uh, little journey of the salmon roe, caviar, savruga, beluga triple grain, and etc. So what we're going to now do is very simple. What they do is they take these leanies, the buck buckwheat cakes, and then what they'll do is they'll take a little bit of sour cream. It'll stop melting like that. <laughs> oh, I know, babe. So we got a little bit of sour cream here. Ah, don't like that one. <laughs> a little sour cream. Kind of warm. Sometimes, as we were talking, on the break, They'll take the vodka and put little herbs or like pepper. They'll uh -huh. do a little pepper on top yep. for the texture. I'm not even going to ask you guys. You know, traditionally, caviar is served with ice, but always protected from the caviar itself. You don't ever want to uh, expose it to that. And uh, generally, mother of pearl. You see the beautiful eggs on the, uh, on the beluga here. And that's exactly what we're going to do is I'm going to take some of the beluga on that side. Well, I would just whack that whole can right there myself. <laughs> that was a little bit of the Ocetra, which also I like. It's very, very tasty. And some of the Saruga. So we have a little, little tasting here. And they don't, uh, they don't mask it any other way. So uh, there's a little tasting for you guys there. Oh, thank Our you. Our special guests. Thank, thank you. Gary and Marty, Our good friends. All right. This next dish that we're going to do right after this we're going to do a little beluga a little etc guys got enough vodka mm. <laughs> 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 Delicious. Real simple, huh? Mm. Mm. Cleanest hands in New York. <laughs> and we're going to let you guys have a little taste here as well of the three. Yeah, thank you. Okay? Now, I'm going to take these little blinis off now from the griddle. We'll get some of those done up. Now, pidog. Pidogi would be Polish. Pidog would be the Russian way. It's a wonderful dough. Whatever you want to call it, call it what you want. They're wonderful. I'm going to show you how simple this is. It's two pots, the filling, and then there's the dough. The dough is really, really delicious, too, and light. This is how you make it. What we're going to do is we're going to take an egg and a little H2O. Then we're going to take a little vegetable oil, a couple of pinches of salt. Look at this. I'm trying to escape. And then what we're going to do then is really dissolve this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what we're going to do is we're going to start whisking in, first of all. You could do this on a 
machine. You can do this with a ha handheld. We're going to make this pierogi dough right here. Now, once this dough comes together, the thing about doughs is this. Just when you thought, like, you don't have enough liquid, you'll be, you'll be really amazed how much liquid is really down there and forming this dough like this. And like with any dough, it needs to form a ball, come off the sides, and then you got to let it rest. Okay? You got to let it rest. That's what this one is right here. Now, this isn't going to proof. This isn't like a bread dough. Okay? My uh, sous chef, Nick Schust, and a restaurant in Orlando. This is actually his mom, Lillian's, inspiration. Her little Russian secret. So I want to thank her for the recipe and letting us share it with all of you. This is the real deal. Now watch what happens. When the dough... We're going to start working the dough out. This is a rolling pin. You can just, like, use one of the kids' baseball bats. Just cut the handle off, you know. <laughs> It'll work the same way. You want to make sure you flour it. Now, I told you about the filling. Nick's mom will bake some, I love these too, she'll bake some potatoes. And then with a potato ricer, as I have right here, you see what it's doing? You just kind of put them through this. Italian people do the same thing when they're going to make gnocchi. Now, this is about four or five potatoes like this, big potatoes. And then they'll use a little bit of vegetable oil, salt to season it. Ah, we'll kick it up a few more notches. <laughs> and then I'm uh, using a lot of fresh grated white pepper. Okay? Hey, it's Nick's mom. And then... They'll use some farmer's cheese. You can see it's not wet like cottage cheese, how it's wet. This farmer's cheese, you could use goat cheese. You want to not have a lot of whey in there. You want to add that in there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix this as the filling. You want to add more cheese, you can add more cheese. But this is uh, Nick's mom. We'll make this potato and farmer cheese filling. Now, before you get it all incorporated, what you want to do is you want to taste it. More salt, more pepper, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're ready to make these pierogues. Watch this. We've got the filling, our floured surface. We're going to take this dough. It's a little sticky, you see? So you want to work with a little flour like this on your pin. If you don't, you're going to have a mess. And we're basically going to roll this about a quarter of an inch, folks. See when it starts doing that? That means you've got to add more flour to it. We're going to add these quarter of an inch. We're going to cut some triangles. And then we're going to take our filling put them in the triangles and fold them over like this and then you crimp them just like what I got right here you see that now when you're ready to do these you put them inside some lightly salted water just like this when we come back I'm gonna show you how to finish them don't touch the dial we'll be right back folks <laughs> Well, we're back. Now, once he's poached, guys, you want to dry him. And then what you do is you melt some butter. Now, you can, some people serve them.
just not with any butter, right out of the, when they get done steaming like that. I like a little color on mine. I like to saute them in a little butter. I even like a little bit of, uh, maybe just a tiny bit of nutmeg, a little bit of nutmeg on them, a little salt and pepper. And they're always served with pickled red onion and sour cream. Now the leftover dough, there's a certain name, right Jill? Yeah. What's the name of this dish? Halushki. Halushki. The leftover dough, you poach that, you caramelize some onions, my kind of dish. You add all of that leftover dough, you see with the onions like that? And I'll season it up with a little salt and a little bit of pepper. And then, how they finish this is with a little bit of cottage cheese like this. I know, how can it go wrong with that, right? <laughs> so there it is. I want to thank my good friends Gary and Marty being here. We love them. We love you guys. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow, everybody. Yeah.